What's up YouTube, Captain Cars here, happy Tuesday. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install your cams, get all your rocker arms and everything cleaned and prepped, ready for cam degreeing, which I'll be doing later on this week. And then on top of that, I've got some modifications slash new parts to install on my B16 intake manifold, so stay tuned. All right guys, so starting out, we're gonna get kind of the cam, rocker and rocker arm assembly all put into place. And you'll notice that I'm using the Lucas brand uh, oil assembly lube. And I really enjoyed using it this time around. I think I like it a lot better than the old gray. Um, maybe if you watch my old uh, videos, I use the gray, uh, like kind of graphite style assembly lube. And that stuff just kind of hangs around in the oil too much. So I think this Lucas is gonna be the way to go, kind of my new favorite. This or either that uh, Permatex ultra slick assembly lube is pretty nice stuff too. But as you can see here, I'm installing all my rocker arm assemblies and sliding in the rocker arm shafts. Now with these rocker arm assemblies, since this is a VTEC engine, some of you guys know that there is two pins that gotta kinda slide back and forth inside those assemblies that lock those fingers together. And you got the pins and then the return spring. But those pins, since this engine has been sitting for so long, those pins were pretty dang dry, so kinda had to pull them apart with magnets, get them nice and clean, and some of them I even had to take into work and blast like 100 pounds of air into those little rocker arms to get those pins to shoot out. But eventually got them all out. And when I do these last two, where you see I've got to rock my, or not rock, lock my VTEC for adjusting my cam timing, you'll see as I pull them apart, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So separating them into three to lock your VTEC to get it ready for cam degreeing. You'll notice that I pull the pins out and swap them. So the long pin that's usually hanging out around in the middle, I go ahead and stick that one into the arm on the left hand side. Of course, cleaning them off and coating them in assembly lube. Yeah, putting the long pin on one of the side rockers there, that allows the VTEC rocker to kind of lock into place so they move at the same time. And put the other pin in and re-rubber band it back together to get it ready for install. And here you can see that this arm, this VTEC arm moves independently where this one is locked. So you can kind of see the difference. Um, the only reason we need to do this is for setting the cam timing. So actually after I'm all done putting these all back together, get the cam timing set, gonna have to revert all this and reinstall it. So then now that you got all the assemblies in, what I like to do is take those rocker shafts, pull them out a little bit more, just so I make sure that those holes that the locking pins have to go into are pointing straight up. That makes sure that the locking pins just push right in. Really simple. And now that we have all the rocker arm assemblies locked into place, we can now go ahead and take off all the rubber bands that were holding them together. Won't be needing those anymore. Now before I drop the cams into place, I like to cover every cam journal in a good amount of that Lucas assembly loom, also the cams as well, just to make sure they turn freely in there without getting all scratched up. Now before we lock those cams down, we gotta make sure that the engine is at top dead center by aligning the little timing marks down here. Now if we weren't at top dead center, we could run into issues where the valves would be forced to open up and then clash into the pistons because the timing would be all off. So as you can see on the little crank sprocket here and the oil pump, you've got two little indicators. Just gotta make sure those are nice and lined up, like so. Now once you got these indicators lined up, basically means that cylinder number one, closest to the timing belt side, is at top dead center, or at least pretty darn close. And as long as your cams are nice and lined up with their indicators, you can now install the cam covers. Um, just for now, since I'm gonna be pulling these off a little bit later in the week, I'm just gonna zip them down with my impact gun. I've just got this thing set at low, so at most it's pushing like nine foot pounds, so don't worry. And now that everything's lined up, we're good to go ahead and throw on our timing belt. You can see I kinda do it, I don't know if this is the order that everybody does it in, but I put it around the timing sprockets first, then around the tensioner and then just kind of wedge it over the uh, little crank sprocket there. And I just kind of use the tensioner to my favor. Sometimes I pull it down 
um, to make small adjustments here and there when I'm installing it. But overall, it went on pretty simple, and they must not have decked too much off of the uh, the block or the head here because everything fit up pretty good, and my tension looked pretty good all the way around. So I was pretty happy with that. Now let's go ahead, take a first spin, and see if everything lines up after one rotation. Now this should feel pretty dang smooth. You should have no problem turning your engine over with a ratchet like this. So it's kind of whack, but these Honda engines actually spin counterclockwise, so that's the way I like to turn the engine over when I'm lining everything up. Here's kind of another look at it where you can see the timing indicators on the adjustable cam gears. Right now, I just have them set to zero degrees. So now that that all lines up, we can head out to the garage because I got some modifications to do to my intake manifold starting on my fuel rail. Now first things first, I'm going to be relocating my fuel pressure gauge, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up, take that off. Then I'm going to remove the old 90 degree NPT fitting as well as the Dash 8 ORB fitting adapter I had on that rail. Now we can go ahead and install my Radium Engineering Fuel Pulse Dampener. My tuner recommended I get one of these because last time I was on the dyno, I was experiencing a lot of pulsations in that fuel rail that were causing some lean spots. So this is nice, it's got that Dash 8 ORB fitting so it screws right into my rail and has a reference port so it adjusts the dampening depending on the amount of boost you're running. And since I prefer to keep my fuel pressure gauge located on my fuel rail, I decided to pick up one of these fittings that basically adapts your Dash 6 AN fittings um, to allow a 1 8 NPT port to kind of flow in line for you to screw in your gauge. So this should work out really slick with my setup. Now turning this intake manifold around, it's time to delete my idle air control valve. Now I'm doing this because this thing would only give me problems. It's kind of a shitty one I have on there, it's not an OEM one, but it'd be allowing air into my coolant. It's got like, it was really bad casting and idle would always be surging and stuff. And once I unplugged it, all my problems went away. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Now here I have a block off plate made by Route 66 Mods. And it's cool, they get you the plate and the gasket. And I'm pretty sure they're like one of the only companies that makes this plate for B-Series. Everybody else makes it for K-Series, but uh, B-Series is dying breed, I guess. So they're the only ones who make it. And it comes in a bunch of cool colors, and I highly recommend it. So that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We like talking to you guys. Uh, follow me on Instagram, afton.voit.ej8. But yeah, next couple weeks, next couple months actually, very busy with car meets, uh, going to a bachelor party next weekend. I've got a whole list of stuff I want to get done on this Civic. And as you guys can tell, I'm kind of all over the place. As parts come in, we're just kind of installing them here and there and bouncing around this project. But Hopefully I can get the Civic started and tuned in June, but if that doesn't work out, I do have a backup date in August, I believe August 2nd, to take my car to the dyno and get it tuned then. But uh, either way, got a lot of work to do. So yeah, stay tuned for the journey. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.